Hi everyone, welcome to the lab. This time I have Roland the accordion pedal board for repair. This is for model 7, but I was told that model 7X has exactly the same pedal board. And this is also a power supply and battery charger. It can charge battery pack in the accordion and also there is a connector here so it is possible to play the accordion using one battery pack and charge another pack here. It can be put like so, plugs in here. This button is to charge the pack in the accordion and this button is to charge this pack here. In one of my recent videos I repaired uh, the accordion model 7X and in the process I noticed that the battery pack was not the original nickel metal hydride pack but a custom built lithium ion pack. I did not investigate at that time but later on I looked up online and I saw that lithium ion mod exists but I didn't quite like it at least on the first glance so I was going to investigate and I was going to borrow this uh, charger from another guy who owns Model 7 but also owns Model 8X which he plays and Model 7 is mostly sitting around gathering dust. So I was just going to borrow this thing for experiments but it was found to be in non-working condition for some reason after being unused for quite some time, maybe even years. And uh, some screws are missing. Four screws here. And uh, four screws on this side. I'm not sure what happened. It was not explained to me. This thing does not power up, so let's take a look. Here we have a power supply and the CPU board, which controls the charger. MIDI interface, uh, the pedals, and there is another connector for expression pedal and the uh, stereo output as well. So something seems to be wrong with this power supply. According to this label there are three outputs, 5 volts 0.2 amps, 24 volts uh, 2.5 amps, and uh, for battery charging 33 volts 1.3 amps. Uh oh, look at this. Do you see this piece of wire? It is loose at the moment, so I'm not sure was it unsuccessful attempt to defeat this fuse, or it melted as well as the fuse. Seems like a desperate attempt to get things going in a hurry, which might work sometimes, but it is quite risky and can easily make things worse cause more damage and make things harder to repair or beyond repair. Not a very good idea. I wanted to remove this power supply from the chassis to take a look at it, but one screw is under this power switch and it's a bit tricky to remove this power switch. I need to push on these plastic things on this side and on the other side and I push the switch out but it's hard to push on such things on the bottom. It looks like a special tool is needed for that. Alright, using this piece of metal to push on the bottom, I managed to remove this switch. So now we have access to this screw. And by the way, I found this connector lifted up a bit. Was this a problem, I wonder? Here is the bottom side of the power supply. We can see an isolation gap between the primary side and the secondary side with optocouplers across the gap for feedback. This chip seems to be a power factor correction controller. This is the main PWM controller. Uh, let's see, this must be the main transformer. This is probably for power factor correction. This is a bridge rectifier. This is probably a MOSFET for a power factor corrector. Uh, this is a temperature sensor. And this is probably a MOSFET for the main controller. And a quite sophisticated secondary side. I didn't look at that closely yet. 
And by the way, the brand is Magnetech. And on this label as well, I just didn't mention it before. So everything looks fine so far, no obvious damage. Look at this, the fuse is fine without this wire. I'm not sure what the deal is. Perhaps whoever tried that didn't have any tools to check if the fuse was blown or not. So, I started checking around the primary side. I checked uh, MOSFETs and capacitors, and they look fine, at least on the first glance. Some checks are not conclusive in circuit, but at least nothing is obviously wrong. And then I started checking the secondary side, and I found that there is a short across this rail, and there is an electrolytic capacitor uh, here, and there is a short across it, this capacitor, and there are two more capacitors here, uh, these two pins, and these two pins. So they look shorted as well, but this is at DC, at 1 kilohertz, using this LCR meter, the capacitors measure just fine. No problem at all. And that means, I think, they are shorted through the transformer. So, uh, there is a diode here, this 3-pin package. Uh, this one, it is marked D3 on the board. And uh, it must have two diodes, and they are in parallel, because we can see the trace, shorting two of them. And uh, there is a short here. And that's why, I suppose, the rail looks shorted through the transformer, because this diode must be shorted. It was quite easy to remove this clip and desolder this thing, and sure enough, it has two diodes with a common cathode, this uh, center pin. So we can check this diode is fine, but this one is shorted. So now we can see that there is no short across this rail anymore. Here is this part on DigiKey for 56 cents a piece plenty of them in stock, so it should be possible to get them in a few days with additional, let's say, five or six dollars for shipping. But I think I already have another part which should work. I am talking about this MUR1620. I bought a few extra ones for my Maki Thump powered speaker repair project. That was another video some time ago. Let's quickly look at some key specs. What do they emphasize here? 150 degrees C operation, low forward voltage drop, high frequency operation, what else is important? Up to 100 volts, 10 amps per leg or per diode, and 20 amps overall, up to 150 amps surge current, and uh, that uh, low forward voltage drop is specified here, let's say 0.9 volts maximum. Now let's look at this one, ultra fast rectifier, 2 times 8 amps, so only 8 amps per diode, but should be more than enough for this application. So 16 amps overall and up to 100 amps uh, surge current up to 200 volts, which is way more than that part, but it is not very important. Um, forward voltage drop is about the same. Temperature is up to 175 degrees C, which is higher. 
and uh, ultra fast means uh, let's see about 35 nanoseconds maximum and I think I've seen recovery time for this device here less than 500 nanoseconds so this one is much faster so they are slightly different but I believe this one is more than adequate for this application so I fitted one of those replacement diodes and now look at this when we power this up an LED here lights up and uh, we can see, I'm using this as a ground, we can see a rail here, 24.8 volts. And we can see a 5 volt rail here, 4.92 on a capacitor here and going through this inductor to this uh, smaller connector. And the only thing I'm not quite sure about is uh, this output which seems to be drifting around. I've seen 5 volts, I've seen 4 volts and uh, I think this is charging output and uh, I think this chip and this MOSFET are involved in uh, regulating it and the input here on the capacitor is sitting at 34 volts so perhaps this is okay when charging is disabled. So I think this looks fine. Now let's see if we power this thing up. We should see this turn on. There you go. And I'm measuring in this uh, battery pack connector and there is nothing. But if I push this button I can hear relay clicking and uh, we can see this floating voltage but the button does not light up and it does not stay on because the battery pack is not connected so now let's try with the battery pack and let's measure in the connector 27.57 and now we should see that this uh, button lights up and stays on and we should see voltage going up there you go I believe charging is working just fine so I think it is fixed thanks for watching bye